Hello everybody and welcome to TTD's webinar on Selling Darwin with Australia's Northern Territory. I'm Maddie Barber, the Special Projects Editor at TTD Media, and I'm joined today by Lucy Pears, who is the UK Marketing Executive for Tourism Northern Territory. So thank you so much for joining me today, Lucy. No, thank you, Maddie. This is great to uh, be here. Lovely. So during this webinar, Lucy is going to give you a fab presentation on all the essential information you'll need to sell Darwin, including how to get there, the best time to visit, cultural attractions, nature hotspots, and all the activities that showcase Northern Territory's diverse terrain. She's also going to run through some of the new product that you can tell your clients about this year. And there'll be selling tips and marketing advice dotted throughout. And then at the end of the webinar, we will be announcing details of a brand new competition. So that will give, be your chance to win. But before we get started, I just wanted to ask you, Lucy, why is now a good time to get to know the Northern Territory better? Thanks, Maddie. Yeah, so, you know, after we've had two years of COVID with lockdown and restrictions, the Northern Territory is such an inviting option because we've got, um, you know, enormous wide open spaces and incredible landscapes. And we've got easy self-drive routes, which means visitors have the freedom to get around how and when they want. Um, and also in a world where we've worked from home for so long and are always near a screen and can't quite switch off, the NT is such a great place to disconnect and enjoy your natural surroundings. Okay, great. So if you're ready, let's hear more about Northern Territory with your presentation. Great. Thanks um, everyone for joining us for our Selling Darwin Masterclass. Um, as Maddie said, I'm going to be talking about why Darwin um, is such a great place to visit, why it makes a great entry point into Australia and what your clients can do whilst they are here. I'll also be talking about our very exciting competition, so listen out for more details on how you can enter. So before we deep dive into the masterclass, I just want to highlight where the Northern Territory sits in relation to the rest of Australia and where Darwin is located in the NT. So as you can see, Darwin is in the north of the Northern Territory, uh, located in the top end. So Darwin makes a gate great gateway into Australia for a number of reasons. It's currently the quickest way to get to Australia with the Qantas non-stop flight from London, or you can also fly with Singapore Airlines via Changi Airport. Darwin Airport is actually really small and it's only got one international flight arriving at any one time. So the queues aren't long and it's really quick to pick up your baggage, which means you can actually be out and on your way to your hotel in less than half an hour, which is so great for when your clients have just been on a really long haul flight and want to get to their accommodation as quickly as possible. Also, Darwin CBD is only about a 15 minute drive from the airport. So again, really quick um, to get to your accommodation. Another reason why Darwin is such a great starting point is that when you're, when you're done exploring Darwin and the top end and the rest of the Northern Territory, it's really well connected to the rest of Australia by air. So your clients can carry on their Australian itinerary from here. So quickly on our great climate, Darwin and the rest of the top end um, has a great climate. It's always summer in Darwin with a year round temperature of about 30 degrees, which makes it a really outdoorsy city. We've got two distinct seasons in the NT's top end. Um, we've got the dry season, which runs May through to October. And we've got the tropical summer, which runs November through to April. So during the dry season, the days are warm, it's sunny, and the nights are slightly cooler. And during the tropical summer, the humidity increases and the monsoon rains arrive. But the rain is actually usually short and sharp. Um, it doesn't last all day, like, for example, the rain in the UK. You can visit the Northern Territory all year round, but you need to make sure you're aware of what your clients want before advising which season they visit in. So the dry season is a really popular time to visit for outdoor pursuits. So camping, walking, cycling, and also things like outdoor events and festivals. Um, and then the tropical summer is actually a really good time to visit for nature and wildlife enthusiasts. So this is when the flora and the fauna is at its most active, 
The waterfalls are particularly spectacular at this time of year. And also another benefit to visiting in the tropical summer is that you can usually secure better rates, there's more availability and fewer crowds. Darwin is a very flat city and it's also very compact, which makes it super easy to get around on foot or by bike. And it means that it doesn't take long to feel at home and familiar, which is definitely a positive when your clients are traveling to the other side of the world. The CBD is really small and it's easy to get to the different bars, the restaurants, the hotels and the waterfront because everything is so close together. A great way to get around actually, um, get around the city and get a feel for Darwin for an afternoon is catching the hop on hop off bus. So this takes you from the tourist information center to all the major sites, including uh, Cullen Bay Marina, Darwin Military Museum, uh, the Museum Art and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory, which is also known as M-A-G-N-T, and the Waterfront Precinct. Uh, so some of these I'll go into more detail later on in this masterclass. There's also Uber in Darwin, which is obviously a very easy choice for transport for anyone in the UK. Darwin's markets are such a huge part of um, Darwin's personality. And if you are sending your clients here, you must make sure that they visit one or more of the popular street markets. And you must also make sure that they're visiting on the right day and the right time for the right market. So I'll just take you through a few um, that I want to highlight um, now. So Mindel Beach Sunset Markets, we've got Parap Markets, we've got Nightcliff Markets and Rapid Creek Markets. Those are just a few of the many markets we have available. Mindel Beach markets are probably the most well known to visitors. You might have heard of them before. They take place on Thursday and Sunday evenings during the dry season. And they're set up right next to Mindel Beach, which you can see in the background. Um, this is a perfect vantage point for watching Darwin's spectacular sunsets. So there are actually over 200 stalls, um, and these include food stands, which offer incredible local and also international cuisine. You've also got an array of arts and crafts and service stalls as well. And a really lovely evening suggestion to your clients would be to grab a tasty meal from one of the many food stalls and hop next door to the beach to eat, drink and watch a fiery orange sunset that Darwin is so famous for. These markets are about a 30 minute walk from the CBD or just a six minute drive. So very accessible from wherever you are in Darwin. For a Saturday morning uh, market, Parap is your go to. It's very much where the locals go. It's a perfect place to get things like crepes, uh, locally made art, delicious fresh coffee. And there are actually regular complimentary shuttles from hotels and landmarks um, and they'll pick you up and take you to the markets. And it's just a five minute drive from the CBD, so very quick. On Sunday mornings, we have the Nightcliff Markets, also very much a locals hangout, uh, great for brunch, you know, fresh coffee, smoothies and fruit. And it's also great for locally made jewelry. This is a 15 minute drive from the CBD and runs all year round, as do the Parap Markets. And the final market I wanna to touch on uh, also runs all year round, and they're actually Darwin's oldest markets. So a really great option for clients who want to have to uh, get to experience kind of authentic Darwin. These markets are really rich in Asian culture with over a hundred stalls dedicated to exotic and tropical fruits and vegetables. They've got dried and preserved foods plus savory and sweet foods as well. And then they've also got things like fresh juices. They've got smoothies, they've got coffee. Um, and they've also got live music, which is really fun. And they run Saturday and Sundays at 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. Not only is Darwin a great gateway to the rest of Australia, like I mentioned earlier, it's also a perfect gateway to the beautiful national parks of the Top End. This is Kakadu National Park. I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's the largest national park in Australia. Um, it's UNESCO World Heritage listed for both cultural and natural outstanding universal values. It's really rich in ancient culture, nature and wildlife, and it's also home to stunning escarpments, epic waterfalls and adventurous swimming holes. It's about a three hour drive from Darwin along sealed roads all the way, so very easy to get to with a self-drive 
and there are also tours that run from Darwin as well. To take in Kakadu from above, there are scenic flights available. You could get these from both Darwin or from within Kakadu National Park itself from either Kuinda or Jabaru, which are the main towns in Kakadu. This is such a great way to see the huge waterfalls in all their glory and just see how vast this national park actually is. For nature and wildlife spotting, a cruise along the Yellow Water Billabong is a must do. You'll see crocodiles and beautiful bird life in its natural habitat. And Kakadu actually has one third of Australia's bird species in it. So if your clients are wildlife enthusiasts, then Kakadu must be on their Australian itinerary. Kakadu is actually home to some incredible ancient rock art as well. Some of it is up to 20,000 years old, so an incredibly interesting place to visit. We recommend staying at least two nights when visiting Kakadu. And our top tip really is to have your clients book a tour guide to show them around because the guides are incredibly knowledgeable and will be able to share so much information and tips about this national park. The second national park I want to highlight is Litchfield National Park. This is very much where the locals go. It's a locals hangout. It's an easy day trip from Darwin. Um, you can do a tour or and they run from Darwin or you can self-drive. It's only an hour in the car, so easy to pop down there for the day. It's perfect for seeing waterfalls. You can swim in water holes. You can go hiking. You'll see enormous termite mounds as well. It's a really glorious place to spend a relaxing and fun afternoon. This, and the third national park I want to highlight is Nitmaluk National Park. So Nitmaluk is about a three and a half hour drive south of Darwin. Again, along sealed roads, another easy self-drive. Nitmaluk is famous for Nitmaluk Gorge, um, commonly known as Catherine Gorge. I'm sure you've heard of Catherine Gorge. Uh, it's made up of 13 different gorges, so it is really big and it's got incredible, dramatic landscapes, um, as you can see in this picture. It's particularly beautiful at sunrise and sunset. Um, and uh, yeah, so if your clients enjoy that kind of Instagrammable sunrise and sunset picture, this is the place to go. You can explore the gorge by kayak cruise or scenic flight. Um, and it's also where the famous Jack Buller walking trail is. So for clients that like to hike, steer them um, in the direction of Nitmaluk National Park. And I mentioned sunset on the gorge is beautiful. There is an amazing dinner cruise that you can do, which involves delicious food and drink and stunning views of the gorge as the sun sets. Now heading back to the capital itself, Darwin is where you can get a ferry to the Tiwi Islands, which is a real deep dive into the Northern Territory indigenous culture. Takes about two and a half hour, um, hours by ferry, um, an easy day trip and very much well worth the journey. You get given a tour by the locals um, and they'll also show you their stunning artworks and textiles, they're all locally made here. It's a really interesting and fun day out. And if your clients are interested in the indigenous culture of Australia, then the Tiwi Islands is a really great place to visit. Plus the locals are great. In fact, the island has actually been nicknamed the Island of Smiles because the locals are so friendly. The Garn is one of the epic journeys that is available from Darwin. The Garn is very popular, it's very famous, I'm sure you've all heard of it. Um, it runs between Darwin and Adelaide in South Australia, and it stops in Catherine and Alice Springs within the Northern Territory. It's an incredibly scenic way to cut straight through the middle of Australia, through the outback, and it's a very popular as experience. So Journey Beyond, who own the Garn, have actually just launched a new product called the Red Center Spectacular. Um, so this begins in March, 2023, and it only um, applies departing Darwin to Adelaide um, on a Wednesday. But this product will stop in Alice Springs for a five night Red Center adventure with Outback Spirit Tours. And this includes exploring Alice and surrounds, Kings Canyon and Uluru. And then you board the gun again in Alice Springs and head down to Adelaide in South Australia. So I don't know if any of you know this, but Darwin is actually the closest capital city in Australia to Asia. It's only a two and a half hour flight from Bali. It's a four and a half hour flight from Singapore. 
As such, it's culturally diverse with an eclectic and amazing foodie scene. Darwin is actually famous for its laksa. There's even a laksa festival, which runs annually in November. And there is such an abundance of fresh and local produce here. So the restaurants are very good in Darwin, plus there's delicious food at the street markets that I mentioned earlier. So um, kind of towards the end of the masterclass, I just want to take you through a few of the different areas of Darwin to give you ideas as where to suggest to your clients visit when they spend time in our capital city, depending on what they like to do. So first up is the waterfront precinct, which lies in the heart of the CBD and is great for things like bars, cafes and restaurants. There's also a safe swimming and wave lagoon, which means you can stay there all day, whether you're swimming, sipping cocktails, uh, eating a delicious meal. It's a great area for families as well. There are lots of year round activities at the waterfront. Um, there's festivals, there's events. Um, it's got a really buzzy atmosphere and there's always something to see or do. And this is where you'll find Stokes Hill Wharf, which is where the harbour cruises go from. Um, plus some of the fishing tours and the 007 Jet Ski Adventures, which is our new jet ski product. The next up is Darwin Harbour itself. There is no better place to watch the sunset than on the water in Darwin Harbour. It's actually seven times larger than Sydney Harbour, which makes it enormous and very scenic. There is a range of harbour cruises you can do depending on what your clients want to do. Um, there are dinner cruises, there are different varieties of sunset cruises, including a delicious champagne sunset cruise. And there's also adventure cruises, which include jet boating and air boating. The harbour is surrounded itself by scenic mangroves and pristine tidal waters. You can scuba dive around the old shipwrecks, which were sunken in World War II and Cyclone Tracy. And there are many fishing tours available as well, where you can catch barramundi, dewfish, golden snapper and threadfin salmon. So moving on to Cullen Bay. Cullen Bay is the opposite side of the CBD away from the water, waterfront precinct. So it's about two kilometers from the CBD and it is a relaxed tropical waterside precinct. So this is where the multi-million dollar homes and yachts sit. It's great for kind of people watching, house watching, yacht watching. And there are some lovely bars and restaurants here as well. You could have a sunset picnic on the lawns that you can see in this picture. And also some of the fishing charters run from Cullen Bay, as do some of the cruises. Um, and this is where you'll catch the ferry to the Tiwi Islands. So Nightcliff Foreshore is another popular location, and but very different to Cullen Bay. Nightcliff Foreshore has a more kind of relaxed vibe, great for picnics, barbecues, and they've got delicious food trucks. You can swim in Nightcliff Pool, which is a lovely place to swim with views of the harbour. You can cycle or walk around here. And there's also the Nightcliff Jetty, which is a really popular spot for fishing and watching Darwin's amazing sunset. And then lastly, I just want to finish off with a couple of acti activities that are very popular for those visiting Darwin. So the deck chair cinema is one of these. Uh, this operates throughout the dry season and it's such an amazing way to watch a movie surrounded by palm trees, possums and the sparkling harbour. Nice to kick back and relax um, and enjoy a great film. Uh, you can also visit cool bars and speakeasies on Austin Lane. Um, and admire Darwin's unique street art along the way. And before I wrap up and say thank you for watching, I have to highlight our very exciting competition we are running in conjunction with this webinar. So to enter, you'll need to answer a question based on the webinar and you'll be entered into a draw to win a place on one of our amazing cocktail making masterclasses using the delicious Darwin Gin. So the events will be run in London, Newcastle and Edinburgh. But if you can't make any of these locations, no worries because there's also a runners up prize of a 50 pound Amazon voucher so you can get entering now. And thank you so much for watching this masterclass. This is my email address. Um, please feel free to visit our corporate or consumer websites. And please do get in touch. We love hearing from you. And if you've got any questions, we would love to help. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lucy. That was brilliant. Packed full of useful information for agents. I did just want to flag that you can enter the competition now at teachingmedia.com forward slash competitions. So fantastic opportunities to make some cocktails with Northern Territory there. And of course, the Amazon voucher too. So I just wanted to, before we wrap up, wanted to ask a few questions about itinerary building, Lucy. Um, agents might have visitors that haven't visited the Northern Territory before and, or haven't even sold the destination before and are wondering how to create an itinerary. What kind of route or itinerary would you recommend for first time visitors um, and, and how long would you recommend a visitor takes to see all the highlights and visit all the stops on it? Yeah, so um, I can choose between two itineraries, so I'm just going to highlight two, depending on what your clients want to see, they're very different itineraries. So um, one of them's in the top end and one of them in the red center. So by the top end, I mean um, the tropical top end, which is Darwin, Kakadu, Nipmuluk and Litchfield. Um, and this um, is a self-drive route called the Nature's Way driving route. It's along sealed roads the whole way. It's very easy drive, you can't get lost. Um, and it starts in Darwin, you'll visit Kakadu National Park, then you'll go down to Catherine and visit Nitmaluk Gorge. And then you'll make your way up to Darwin, but you pass Litchfield National Park on the way so you can just stop off. And this takes about five or six days. And it's a great way to kind of tick off all those main places in the top end. Um, and you can do it at your own speed. Honestly, the self-driving is so easy. And then in the red center, which is our kind of like Australian outback, um, we've got a driving route called the Red Centers Way. So that starts in Alice Springs and it visits um, Uluru and then up to Kings Canyon. Um, and this can be done in a loop. Um, you will need a four wheel drive to do it in a loop um, because you have to go um, along an area called the Marini Loop, which is between Kings Canyon and Alice Springs. But if your clients have a two wheel drive, they can just go back the way they came um, past Uluru. But yeah, so that kind of encompasses all the red center kind of must sees with Alice Springs, Uluru, Katajuta, Kings Canyon. And that takes about five or six days as well. OK, great. Thanks. And what about for repeat visitors, um, clients that are looking for something a bit more off the beaten track, a bit more secret? Um, what itinerary would you recommend for them? Oh gosh, yes, there's so many. I mean, visiting Arnhem Land is a great one for off the beaten track. Um, and also going to places like Bamaroo Plains um, for that kind of safari kind of experience. Or we've got a new lodge called Finnis River Lodge, which is also in the top end. It's slightly off the beaten track. You can drive from Darwin or you can fly um, from Darwin. It's about 20 minute flight. And again, that kind of um, very much like Nick, nature and wildlife getting back to basics but it's also a very experiential luxury property as well so yeah to get off the beaten track i'd go to those kind of properties okay cool thanks and what about marketing advice do you have any tips um or, or advice for agents looking to promote darwin and the northern territory to their customers yeah definitely so the main things that i think you need to remember about the nt is what it's most well known for so these are this is ancient culture nature and wildlife delicious food and drink and really exciting adventure so if your clients are interested in any of the above then you are recommending the nt you've got to recommend the nt to them um, our consumer website northernterritory.com is a really useful tool when explaining to your clients more about the northern territory there are suggested itineraries that you can download on there a bit like those self drives that i just mentioned um, and a whole calendar of festivals and events it's very easy to use it's very consumer friendly um, so i highly recommend getting the most out of that um, and showing it to your clients for examples of why the northern territory would uh, be such a great destination for them to visit Fantastic, thank you. And one last question, I think we've just got time for it. Um, is there anything else that agents should know about selling the Northern Territory right now? Anything else you wanted to flag or should be on agents radar? Um, yeah, so I do want to flag that there are no further entry requirements to entering the Northern Territory other than the entry requirements needed to enter Australia. So it's easy to um, hop into the NT if you're within Australia at the moment. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lucy, for sharing all your destination information today. It's been fantastic. And there's plenty there for agents to sink their teeth into. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Molly. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. And thank you to everyone who's tuned in to watch as well. I hope you've learned something new today and now feel really confident selling Darwin and the Northern Territory.
So thanks again and take care. Thanks guys.